How are you doing? We're continuing our analysis of Super League teams that leads to the NRL and the Q Cup and the State Cup down in New South Wales start and whatever other competition we decide to have a look at. This week, we're having a look at Castleford Tigers who've had a tricky start to Super League. They lost round one at home to Salford at Weldon Road or the Jungle or whatever it's called these days. And then in the second round, they went and got quite heavily to Warrington. They're traditionally known as classic cats. We're going to look at their attack today in the first few minutes of the game. Let's see how genuinely classy they are. Let me share my screen with you. I'm going to start the tape now. This is the very first set of the game Castleford have received the kick-off. Absolutely no point in talking about anything there. Um, quite often in the first hit-up of the game, you can get put on your backside just like that. OK, what I am going to do, though, is rewind this for you to have a, a deeper look. OK. You might have just noticed there that Castleford put on a play, like an X or a block, whatever you would like to call it. My problem with this is, look how bunched up the players are. There is not much happening off the ball there. There is somebody doing some kind of run here. But let's face it, the proof of the pudding is in the eating and the, the Warrington defence is able to bunch up, press and to put pressure on the ball carrier. And as a result, good collision and he ends up basically being driven back. Yes, he ends up on his front, but it's a sketchy, sketchy go-forward play. We now have a simple play here for Castleford. Now, this one really confused me. Nice and wide from the rugby player. So he's getting clearance from the markers. Now, you obviously sometimes get coaches or teams or front rowers or back rowers who want to get in behind and play the ball. But there was no way he was getting in behind this play the ball. Look where he runs. I would have preferred him to go straight and attack these two defenders here. Instead, he runs into traffic and makes sketchy metres. Yes, he lands on his front, but I would argue the metres are very negligible. Now, here's where we go into real big detail. Yes, there's push around the ball here, but it, to be quite honest, these attackers don't look like they're doing anything to take the defence away from the, the ball carrier, and there's certainly nothing happening on this side of the ball. They can put all the push and shape that they want into this carry. But the reality is, if these guys on the outside aren't doing anything to detract or attract attention away from the ball carrier to keep the defenders back on the heels, then this guy who's carrying the football is in for a, a tough time. Once I freeze it there, it's pretty obvious where Castleford are going to attack. Even if I was to move it back uh, two or three seconds, it'd be obvious. And the Warrington defence aren't getting much pressure put on them. And as you can see, Warrington are able to put a lot of men into the collision. Same here again now. Negligible push on the far side at the top of the screen as you look. Yes, there's some push here, but it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious where Castleford are attacking all the time because they don't do anything to hide it off the ball. Now, we can even now start to look at the role of the hooker. His body language is suggesting the ball is coming this way. The body language of these attackers is suggesting they're not getting the ball. So these defenders at the top of the, of the Warrington defensive line here in the top of the screen, they can have a little rest because they know they're not going to have to be called into action. Every subconscious cue is telling Warrington the ball is coming here. And lo and behold, Warrington are able to put men in Warrington are able to get a good control of the collision and certainly go a long way to killing down some rook speed. And then the kick. Protection, negligible. Um, because rugby league is all about cause and effect, every single one of those carries then, we could find something that could have done slightly better with the exception of maybe the very first carry. Every player could have done something more to detract the attention away from the ball carrier. Now, as a result, the kicker is under pressure. The protection here is negligible. The chase is also negligible too. Has the chase been arranged? Has it communicated where the kick is going? The kick ends up poor. They finish the set 30 metres away 
from the Warrington try line. So already, Warrington are starting to win the field position battle and they've got to the ball yet. In the next set, Castleford received the ball approximately 20 metres away from their trial line. So, yeah, Warrington are starting to slowly win the field position battle. We start to have a look at where players retreat to. The body language here is actually quite good. The Castleford players look like they're getting back into their, for want of a better term, tram line. They're getting back into their uh, lane so that they've got good attack. Okay, let's see where they actually end up. Yeah, they went straight back. That's quite good. Okay. Let's look at Castleford are any better at attracting defenders away from their attacker. Hooker didn't hide anything. There's a little pattern here of the decoy run, the block play, if you like. What is now of concern, look how many Castleford players aren't behind the ball yet. Why is that, guys? Is it a fitness issue? Is it an attitude issue? Now, the problem with these block plays, even though they're a play, even though they should, in theory, um, attract attention away from the ball carrier. It's actually really poorly executed because the ball carrier is so far back. And when that happens, these defenders can just detach away from this, call him a decoy runner on this occasion, rather than an option runner. And as a result, because of the nature of the line of run, he is now running an overs line, which means his body is open. And it means the Warrington defenders can get their shoulders in can get under his rib cage and really start to dominate. I prefer to see players coming straight onto the ball or cutting the numbers line. The next play, again, look how bunched up the Castleford Tigers players are. And look at all the subconscious cues telling the Warrington players where Cast are going. Warrington defence is another matter. I mean, the things I can spot there and, and when their time comes, we'll, we'll have a look. But again, uh, the, the success or otherwise of Castleford's carries come down to the individual runner on that occasion. That wasn't a bad carry. Again, all cues. The ball is going right. Castleford now get a little bit of momentum. As a result, they move the ball laterally. My question is, I ask why. Why did they do that? Why did they go left? Let's count the Warrington defenders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine there. That means with a full-back, there can only be three here. With poor attacking shape, the option of the hooker coming out here and creating a four-on-three isn't particularly an option. If they were touchline to touchline, that could be an option if they set it up better. Quite often, if you get near a scrum line, you should have a look on the short side as well because quite often the defence can um, get that read wrong. As it stands, I have to think Warrington have done okay here in terms of their defensive split. But what Castleford could have, could have easily created an overlap here and had a go with these three defenders. Instead, they put a ball here. And I'm asking myself why. It's not advantage line play. The ball carrier should be catching the ball here and hitting the advantage line. And it's not taking Warrington as far back as they should be going. And then we have an extra pass. For what reason, I don't know. Maybe we classify that as a long, long, short line shot. And we'll have a bit more of this as we go along. Now, <clears throat> Castleford are essentially in the green zone, in the football area. So really, Warrington have to do their defence at high tempo and being ready to potentially concede a try. From this scrum line here, I can see that Warrington have overloaded their short time. They've got four, five, six, back seven. They've got seven players on the left side of that cursor and therefore the left side of the play of the ball. So that's seven defenders against a hook of three attackers. It is blindingly obvious to me that a shift to this area of the field, to this corner here, with good attacking shape, would have resulted in an overlap or a try on this side of the field. If it's an overlap and a passive tackle, that means they can do another quick play of the ball and they can keep moving the defence around, the Warrington defence. Instead, we get a laboured line shift and a kick on the back foot. Now, I was probably a little bit harsh to cast the there because it was the last tackle. However, the last tackle doesn't mean you can't score a try. And there was clearly a good overlap there that they could have exploited. A good overlap as well, going towards that area, could properly could have helped them get an even better kick away. 
as it happens, it did, was okay, and so was the chase. But I think that was more by accident rather than design. They've got some pressure now, so I've got to say, for all their idiosyncrasies in attack, I won't call them faults. Castleford are now in control of this game. And this is what sometimes your early results can hinge on, these little moments, because Castleford have now got a repeat set and they've got an excellent chance to put some points on the board. Let's have a look technically at how they do things. Where were the subtle clues going then? You could say that there was a little bit of push here from, from Castleford. I'm asking myself why they go into this side of the field. I would like to see Castleford target these defenders here that are clearly backtracking and pull the Warrington defence to the right side of the screen instead. They play back into the rug, and how many metres have they made, how much goal forward have they created, very, very debatable. Now, they're going back to this area again, so you've got to ask yourself, have they got a plan? Are they targeting a certain defender? Are they trying to, are they trying to upset uh, the rhythm of the Warrington defensive line somehow? They also seem to like the forwards moving the ball onto the 5-8 or the half. Now, let's have a look at this. Let's really dissect. Did he engage any defenders? This front rower. I would argue very, very debatable. I would argue this defender has bitten a little bit, but he could easily detach and go to the outside runner. I would argue... This defender and this defender may have already started to drift their attention away to the people who are going to receive the ball. Now, the 5A, the standoff. I would expect him to know a lot better than to just pass the ball this close to the line, or sorry, this far away from the line, and only to pass it short like this. If he'd have passed long behind this attacker, behind this back rower, what would have been created? Now, Looking at the freeze frame now, it looks like there was only a wing on the other side of the play of the ball. And his vision did not allow him to have a look at the edges. He went straight, short all the time. So what I've seen so far from Castleford already is long, long, short a couple of times. I'm now going to categorise that early uh, double pass and then short pass as a long, long, short, even though it looked a little bit spontaneous. No push on this side. So these defenders can switch off. Again, we have the, the bigger players doing the tip-on. That is a far better tip-on. It has made a defender bite. This defender, he's got his feet in cement now. He's spread his legs and so has this defender. We've now got space here, right? For all their um, questionable attack, I'm looking at Warrington and thinking they've got some questionable defensive structures too. Space there, space there. Green grass and fresh air. Now, as a viewer, even if you're a layman or a laywoman, you can clearly see if this ball goes out the back and gets to an edge here, so we're attacking here, Castleford are in to score. These are absolute basics, guys. There is space here for Castleford to attack. Remember, we asked the question, are they classic cats? Are they still classic cats? Well, the classic attacking team knows when to see space recognises space, recognises cause and effect. If they do X to a defence, then Y will happen. Have a look at the Warrington defenders. This guy's got his feet in cement or he's struggling. This guy has turned his hips in. Warrington are there for the taking. Steady passes short. Massive overlap opportunity missed. This could have seen Castleford 6 nil up, 4 nil up, 6 nil up. These kind of things change the season. Warrington are now north from 2. And I've only played the tape for an attacking... Uh, period of three sets and it's three minutes on the clock and I've seen a lot of reasons why Castleford might be troubling this season already. Let's see what the next play brings. Already we've seen a pattern of long, long, short. Long, long, short. They take another play which I sort of consider to be a settler but an offload came anyway. Now, they've set up in the middle of the field. The tackle, forgive me, is the fifth tackle so really they need to be thinking about you know, it to be to give to give to play devil's advocate and to give Castle a fair chance. It is early in the season, so their attack is going to crumble at some point. I wouldn't expect it to crumble in the first three minutes. 
unexpected to be disjointed and expecting the team to come out with the coach's ideas fresh in their head, particularly as full-time professionals. So there's no excuse, if you ask me, for some of the things I'm seeing. But what you can do early in the season is, if your attack doesn't work, just get hold of the ball on the last tackle, dink it into the end goal, get a repeat turn. Now again, we've got this shape again. Pump the back man. It looks like we've got an overlap. If I freeze the, the tape there, if this ball goes to the back man, at the very least, he can have a look to see if he's got an overlap or stick a kick in or a kick should come from here. He goes to the back man. Now, that there is a simple 3v2. All he needs to do is pass the ball there. Let's see what happens. He tries to pass long and Warrington go all the way to score. Now, I'm going to go back. They've done good things. That's a 3v2. He passes the ball to number four. Number four goes through, sucks in the wing or scores himself. Instead, he tries to pass long. Golden rule if you want to avoid an intercept. Don't pass long close to the trial line. So the defensive line. Don't pass long close to the defensive line. Passes long. Boom. So what I saw then, maybe I'm a real harsh judge, right? But these are full-time professionals, full-time coach. Got plenty of time to work on combinations. I'd expect the attacking team to all be moving off the ball, both sides to play the ball. I'd expect them to be telling lies to the defence to keep the defence guessing. And I wouldn't be expecting my pivotal players just to pass short, just to pass short. I don't know when to pass long. I think Lee Radford needs to do an awful lot of work in terms of push off the ball on both sides of the ball, keeping players busy. I also think Lee Radford needs to have a look at the decision-making skills of his players and possibly needs to go back into absolute basics. So, a simple 3v2 there. But that can't happen at this level of rugby league. Just in a few minutes, I've seen some reason the fans why you might be an orphan too and it's quite a simple thing see you next week